just four people four people today. That's all we need. We're the best. Uh -huh. Zoom's fighting with me. <laughs> okay, I give up. Oh, so close. Okay. Hi, all. Yeah, there was like 40 something in the last section. I think everybody's just coming to the early section to be done with it. Should we just, it's a minute early. Should we just go for it? Okay. Uh, for some reason, um, the pictures of people, um, Zoom insists on making it a long skinny strip and it, and the top of the window is out of my screen. So I can't click on the array of faces. So, I can't I can't see people very well today. Um, maybe if I bring it into the other window. Nope, still doing it. I don't know if you can see, but okay, I'll move you over here. Yeah, it's it's insistent. So um, new homework posted. Uh, I still can't come up with a a way that I like to grade y'all. So I, I really apologize. I don't have a syllabus up yet, but just assume everybody's doing well. 
Uh, what I'd like to do is just so you can self check mostly, but I, I still want you to do it. It'll still be part of the grade is I'll post a, a what I would probably do as a homework quiz. If if I if we were in class, if we were in person, I would have a homework quiz every week and I'll post that and I'll just really check um, if you did it or not, if you looked at it or not, uh, more than having it as a grade, like I won't score you at like 90% or whatever. Um, and that's just a way that you can check and make sure you, you see what I think is important. And you can see if, uh, see if you got that out of the homework. Uh, and if the grader, I didn't say this the last section, I forgot to, but if the grader uh, counts off for something, uh, it's you, you earned those points, you should get those points. I'm happy to give you those points back. Uh, so please come in and argue points if you like. And I, I, that actually makes me happy when people come to argue points because it means they looked at the homework. They looked at the solution. So, um, yeah. Um, I can't think of anything else to say. Um, okay. Well, then just get into it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so today we're, we're going to fill in two lists. One is, uh, um, actually I should just go on and do the problem and then and then come back to these lists. But one is uh, ways to make using the small signal model to find gain R in and R out simpler. And one is uh, two port rules. And you may have seen two port rules explicitly or you may have used them um, a long time ago under another name, but you can think of an example uh, two port rule as if you had a circuit and somebody asked you to find the seven in resistance. Does anybody remember what you do to, f to find the seven in resistance? Maybe. Uh, but so so you'd zero V in. And if you zero V in, the circuit gets pretty um, friendly. It gets rid of a lot of stuff and makes the analysis easier. So in the same way, there's uh, two port rules uh, for finding, you know, the gain, the R in, R out uh, of, of a more complicated circuit. So we'll put those rules down here. We'll put just how to um, make the KVL, KCL stuff simpler up here. Um, and then those rules you'll be using for the next three or four weeks. Okay, so first of all, just to remind you of what we did last time. Um, is this is the size of the text okay? Can you see that okay? Yeah, it's good. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, so we had pretty complicated circuit. This is a pretty complicated circuit. There are resistors here, this, and you had a capacitor giving you your V in, going to the actual amplifier. And we called that R load. And this R bias. These were your RBs. Um, so we had a pretty complicated circuit. Uh, one, one thing we're going to, I'm going to, uh, I'll say it's okay to assume uh, for this class. Uh, maybe when we, when we get to frequency response, I'll, I'll change, but I, I think we'll keep this uh, through the quarter that uh, this biasing circuitry, so this circuitry right here, the whole reason it's here is to set a default current through your amplifier. And it is, uh, if you, you, it's okay for for you to equate this entire circuit. Let me put a, put a better circle around it. 
this, this circuit right here, it's okay um, during while you're doing the small signal analysis for this class to uh, take that as a voltage source. Okay, and it's a consider it a DC circuit. Okay. It actually when you put uh, a moving signal onto the input of your amplifier, it actually does feedback and mess this circuit up a little bit, we'll, but we'll assume that doesn't happen. We'll assume that this is behaving like a nice constant DC source, ideal DC source. Okay. If you do that, then you can look at your amplifier as The input of a moving signal and the input of a DC signal. Uh, and this V in right here, that's the voltage supplied by your biasing circuitry. So you can model that as uh, just as a DC source. And then the moving signal that comes through your capacitor right here, you can model that as a moving signal. Um, and by the way, uh, yeah, today's going to be more lect lectury. So it's going to be a lecture day. And then we'll start um, doing more practice on Wednesday and Friday. Okay. Um, so, and then this would be our load. Okay. So it's always, even though. This is really not exactly what's happening. A moving signal right here actually does get into this circuit a little bit and mess with it. Uh, we'll consider it as a DC source. Okay. So now moving back to what we did Friday. Today's Monday, right? <laughs> uh, what we did Friday is we said, okay, well, this picture right here this picture right here is good for voltages and currents, but uh, we want to find gain. And gain is a, a change in V out over a change in V in. This is, this is more for currents and voltages. You could put a voltage on the input, find the output, record that, and then change V in, and then record the output and take the differences between the, the those values to find the gain. But that's the that is um, that won't find you an equation. I guess you could use an equation for it. It won't. It won't find you a, a pretty equation for it. And that bothered people, so they wanted to find a better way to do it. And the way they did it was to use small signal model in place of this transistor. And the small signal model only cares about the moving signal. I know I talked about some other stuff. With the previous class, let's see what I did. Oh, yeah, no, that was a much better explanation. Um, yeah, okay, so we will take this as um, this is the picture I just showed you, but let me say one more thing up here is that uh, we took this circuit and we actually. Uh, last class, we divided this into two problems. One is the DC part, where you're setting for a default current through your amplifier. You're setting voltages on the base, voltages on the collector, voltages on the emitter to, to, to put the transistor in the region of operation you want and force the current um, that you want through your amplifier. Okay, um, so that's one half of the problem, and you, you always do that first. You always do the biasing first. Um, oh, I actually take that back. <laughs> but it, the DC, the biasing is the DC part of it. And then you have a moving part of the signal. That's your gain. If you're trying to find an amplifier, gain is important. So that's a moving part of this, this uh, the behavior of your circuit. And what we did for small signal analysis is we found uh, a region of, this is a, this picture here is a transfer a VTC graph. If there's a linear part in this on this graph, then what you can do is you can say, oh, I can find the DC part and the moving part. And if I want the total story, I can just add them together. If you're in a linear 
region of this graph over here, then superposition holds. And um, if you have a description, two different two descriptions of parts of the circuit, you can add them together to get the total description of the circuit. Okay, I kind of went back on that one, but is is that okay about the DC part and the moving part? Okay, I got a thumbs up. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, forgot to mention that over here. We're over here. Okay. So um, this right here is your DC part. Right now it has both parts together and that's too hard to figure out. So a good way to, the, the way that smart people figured out is to replace this transistor with the small signal model. And this small, small signal model is still uh, modeling a transistor. So it still has a collector, an emitter, and a base. Um, and um, what you do is, since it still has the same three terminals as your transistor, you just replace this transistor with this transistor now. And you see that the emitters tied to ground, the base is tied to E in the collector has V out on it. You have the resistor there. Okay, so remember this is this is just a piece of a superposition problem, and the DC part of it is figured out someplace else. So anything DC in the circuit, you get to zero out. So DC DC parts of this. The DC part of VN. Okay, so this goes away. It's just like this question. is. Oh, you have a question? Yes. Uh, okay. Can you hear me? Uh, can you speak up a little bit? Yes. Okay. So you're talking about shorting the power supply VN as well as uh, VDD or the, the top one. Yes. When you do that, does that mean that the sine wave, the AC VN in the real circuit just shorts? through the DC supply? Uh, yes, but remember that, so, so you're, you're gonna look at a lot of these circuits, you're gonna replace the transistor with a small signal model and you're gonna zero things out and it's gonna look like a circuit that just doesn't make sense. Okay. Th that's gonna happen. Um, but just remember that this is just one piece of a superposition problem and yeah. Maybe in, I don't know if you got weird circuits when you did superposition practice in, in your circuits, in your other circuits class, but just believe. Okay. Oh, well, my <laughs> question is, I, I do think the, I see the, the, the usefulness of the model. Uh, okay. My question is, if, if when you short the DCs, okay. uh, is that an actuality, what happens to the AC part of the signal? It just simply uh, shorts through all DC sources? Um, or is it at, at this point just not only a model, but just a model? Okay, Let's see. Um, in the in the actual circuit, these are still there. Oh uh, yeah, but, but the the AC it doesn't travel from through the supplies as a short. It doesn't do that, right? Uh, no, not in the not in the complete story. Oh, well, not even the AC part of, of a signal, right? Uh, yeah, you, you zero this, and that's why it looks like a ground. 
I, I, can you can you exp uh, ask ask that one more time? Oh, I think I I understand. All I was asking is um, when you have an input and the input has BC as well as AC, <laughs> does the AC part only? Does that travel through the power supply, the DC one, as if there's nothing there, like yes. each draw? In yes. This? Okay. It looks really weird, and you'll get all sorts of circuits that just won't work in real life. But for analysis, if you can believe that this describes exactly how the moving part of the signal moves through your circuit. Oh, that was weird. Uh, that how the AC part of your signal moves through the circuit. Um, if you um, believe that's the wrong, that's not the word I'm looking for. Believe that, then um, it's not the right word. Um, I do get what you're saying, though, in terms of <laughs> it's useful if you just take it as it is. I get that. Yeah. It's if you believe that this model tells you everything about how things move, not the not the DC values, but how things move, then this whole whole picture of the circuit tells you how they move when like our load is exists in it too. Okay. So what it would mean is um, if on top of our load, on top of it, if there would be a sudden change there. Mm -hmm. That change would also simultaneously exist on the bottom node. Um, yeah, if you have a sudden change up here, if you if this is moving too, then you have to treat it as a superposition problem, and you would zero this and just look at this signal. Oh, and okay, I understand now. Yeah, there's um, some problems later on when you get noise on the supply and ground that you actually do that. You say, well, I want to know how much noise on the ground will change B out. And to do that, you zero this, and then you put some noise on here and see how much of it shows up on V out. So there's, this is useful that way too, to see how much noise on ground or the supply will mess up your output because you just get to add it to the actual output um, since it's a super, uh, since both of those would be pieces of a superposition problem. Thank you. Um, get rid of my, my zeros here. OK, so we got to here. And I'm just going to go through this. It's on, uh, I think I got that last one recorded. But on this one, uh, if you want to find gain, that's V out over V in. And if you're using this picture to find that, um, uh, it's really hard. When you just uh, redraw this with the small signal model in the circuit, it's usually pretty hard to figure out where to start. So I just start doing KVL or KCL, whatever I'm in the mood for. Um, and I just so happen to know that V out's a good place to start. Oh, I didn't prettify this. Let me do. If, uh, if you can simplify your circuit by putting things in parallel, it's a, a good place to start. And I, we did this last time. So do you see what can go in parallel? Uh, R load and, and RO. Yeah, so let's just redraw that. We are V in. And there, there you're at a circuit that, that looks really strange. I mean, there's nothing, there's no supply up here. It seems like this should just all collapse to zero, right? So this is, this is an example of something that looks really strange, uh, but it describes, it, 
it describes just the moving part, what's happening in the moving part. And this dependent current source actually keeps it from collapsing. But um, so, so now it's, it's pretty. So let's look at what V out is. I think last time we, we went through this is this direction going down is considered, uh, it's defined as the positive direction of current. But to find V out, you want the current going through the resistance. So actually have a negative GM VBE, and then that current, that's the current through this dependent current source. With the minus sign times the resistance. And um, that's, that's your equation for V out. But in these equations, if you have a voltage or a current that doesn't show up here, you want to get rid of it. And you need to have whatever voltages and currents show up in this equation right here, they also have to show up in this equation. So V outs in both of the equations. Check, that's good. But what about VBE? That's VBE not VBE is VN. Okay. So VBE equals VN. So, and you know the definition of gain is V out over V in. So if you divide both sides by V in, you get V out, dividing this equation, both sides by V in. <laughs> That's supposed to say R load. Okay, so that's how we found the gain equation. Um, it turns out that this is, and again, this is for the common emitter. It turns out that, uh, what we're, we're gonna look at um, the three styles of amplifiers. There's the common emitter, the common base, and the common collector. And for MOSFETs, there's the common source, common gate, common drain. But we're going to look at those three different amplifiers. Um, and it turns out that this common emitter is the only one that you can pretty easily find gain um, directly from this diagram. Okay. So when you start to get to more complex amplifiers and all that, um, you, you have to use some tricks. And one is, um, you can use kind of a chain rule to find gain. You can say um, V in, uh, whoops, I out over V in times V out. Okay, do you do you agree that if I multiplied those two, the I outs would cancel out and you'd get V out over V in? Okay, so that's a trick, but let's look at this a little bit more here. Uh, what do you think V out over I out is? If you had to give it a name. R out. R out. Um, and I used a capital R here. Um, notice that in the small signal model, RO is lowercase, GM is lowercase, R pi is lowercase. When you see a lowercase RO, GM, or R pi, that means it's for a single transistor. By convention, when you use the parameters inside the small signal model, those, those are lowercase. But right now, we're actually analyzing a bigger circuit um, a circuit with a resistor up here. We're, we're not just looking at a single transistor anymore. We're looking at an entire common emitter circuit. And when you're using, uh, when you're uh, talking about the values for an entire circuit, you use a capital letter. So the R out for the um, single transistor was one thing, but this, if you see a capital letter, that means it's the R out for the entire circuit. 
to me. I think I did a much better job um, presenting in the first class. I wish I would have recorded that. Uh, let's see. Um, I out over VN, anybody have an idea on what that, that might be called? What a, this is it. Oh. Exactly. There you go. But it's a it's a capital G. What and why is it a capital D, G again? It's for the whole circuit. It's for the whole circuit. Exactly. So the little GM that's the transconductance for a single single transistor. This is the transconductance for the entire common emitter amplifier. Okay. So. Um, if if we could find big GM and big R out, then we could just multiply them to get the gain. And again, for the common emitter, you can pretty much go directly to finding the gain. But when you get have a more complicated circuit, it's actually going to make be easier to find GM and R out. And the reason is that um, you. I'll go back to the two port rules uh, for the seven in equivalent again. When you're trying to find R out, again, uh, use zero V in. And zeroing V in gets rid of a whole bunch of the, the com complex part of the circuit and it makes it really easy to find um, R out. Turns out that there's two port rules. There's two port rules for when you're using small signal models, they're actually not just for two port models, it's for um, um, very, there's a, a quite a few uh, analyses out there that use two port models, but the two port model rules that we're, we'll be using for small signal anal analysis is um, for finding the gain, uh, you have V out over VN, that's what we did, but it turns out for GM, you want to see what the maximum amount of current you can get out of the output of your common emitter is. So you ground that so it has a really easy path to go through. So when you're finding the transconductance of the entire circuit, you actually ground the output of the circuit and see how much current comes out. And grounding the output, you'll see in a minute, um, actually simplifies the circuit quite a bit. Um, for R out, it's the same rule as the seven and finding the seven and resistance. You zero your input. Um, and then for R in, it's uh, your V in over I in, and you don't get, there's nothing you, you, you get to zero for that. You have to, you have to keep the complete circuit. Okay. Um, so let's, let's do that. I'm going to steal these because they're way over on the side. So let's use let's use this um, let's use this technique of finding GM and R out separately, and then multiply them multiplying them to find the gain. So I'm going to come back up here. This was our this was our picture before any simplifications went on. Put that there. Clean it up just a touch. Okay, so uh, the original, right after we re replaced the transistor with the small signal model and did a little bit of prettification, this is what we got. Um, so let's find GM first. Move this. So let's find GM first. Um, so here's our circuit, and for GM, it says, hey, uh, you, let's, you get to zero V out, um, and then find the I out over V in. So we want to zero V out. It went so much better in the first hour. Okay. We want to zero V out, and then um, we're going to find I out over 
E in. Okay, so every time you apply one of these two port simplifications, go back and see if you can get rid of stuff in the circuit. Do you see anything you can get rid of in the circuit? Can't you get rid of R out in parallel with R load? Exactly, why, why is that? Because they're grounded on both sides. Yes, and there's no current going through it, so that, it's like yeah. there's no branch there. So yeah, you get to get rid of this. Okay, and then uh, for GM, your I out um, is this current right here. So wherever your V out is, it's the current coming out of your circuit. And so I'm gonna write I out. Since I don't know where to start, I'm just gonna pick something to find. Um, what's, what's I out equal to? Negative GM VBE. Negative GM VBE. Remember, this is a current source, and how much current it's conducting is GM times VBE. And since it's defined as positive in this direction, if we're looking at the current going this way, it's negative of that. Okay, so that's great. We've got an equation. Uh, in our equation, we only want if whatever currents and voltages show up in this equation, those are the only currents and voltages that should show up here. So I see I out, so that's good. Uh, oops, VBE. How do we get rid of VBE? It's equal to VN. It's equal to VN. Remember that this uh, model right here, this is the base collector em and emitter. So this voltage right here is VBE. And now you can see that V in goes from here to ground, and VBE also goes from there to ground. So they're the same thing. So we can replace that with V in. And then what you want is I out over V in. So if you do I out, if you divide both sides by V in, then you get negative GM. So what that says is, is that the transconducted of the common emitter is actually equal to the transconductance of the single transistor. And you'll find that in almost every circuit we look at this quarter. Whatever transistor has V in going into it, the transconductance for the entire circuit is usually equal to that. And that's because it's that transistor that um, controls the current through your amplifier. So if you change the current through that transistor, you're changing the current through your entire amplifier. And so, um, yeah, this usually ends up being the transconductance, the big GM of your entire circuit. Okay, so that's GM. Remember, we're, we're trying to use this shortcut to find gain where you find big GM and multiply it by R out. We just found um, big GM and it was minus little gm. So let's go and try to find r out now. So we have to go back to our original um, picture of our transistor. And we know for v out, what's the two port simplification we get to do? vn equals zero. vn equals zero, so I do that. And then after you apply that two port rule, simplification. Now we go back say that, and see if we can get rid of stuff. So anything we can get rid of on this thing? R pi. R pi. Yeah, so there's zero volts here and there's zero volts here. So that's great. We can get rid of R pi, but there's actually something else that we can get rid of. Of all the components in this in this circuit diagram, which one do you think make, gives you the biggest headaches when you're doing analysis? The dependent current source. The dependent current source, okay. And what's what's the current through this current source? Uh, zero, because there's no VN. Yeah, so this 
this the current through here is GM times VBE. What's VBE? Zero. Zero. So actually this goes away. And what you end up with is And then what to find R out, um, you look at the resistance you see. If you're on the output, what's the resistance you see? R not in parallel with R load. Exactly. And we'll go, um, when it's a little more complicated, we'll, we'll go a little bit more into that analysis. But um, yeah, it's diff that's the resistance. That's the resistor value is the resistance. So that's your R out. And then um, we knew that, so let's see what that does. You have a negative GM for your big GM. And then for your R out, you have RO parallel R load. And that is your gain. If you, if you go back and look at the equation for gain that we found it's going directly um, without using big GM and big R out, we got negative GM, GM RO parallel with R load. If you use the trick, you got negative GM times RO parallel R load. So you got the same result. So is that okay for... Um, is uh, kind of um, using big GM times R out to find gain and why it's the same, why you get the same result as just going directly to gain. Okay, so a couple, a couple of things to fill in here. And I'm just going to go back to Um, so we've got our, um, this, this list is complete. Those are our two port rules for finding the gain, big GM, and R out, and R in. Okay, we, I'm gonna, uh, there's gonna be a, a fourth rule on this list, but let's see that, that this, this list is some simplifications that you can usually do, or may be able to do when you're doing small signal analysis. Um, one is zero DC sources. And why do you get to zero DC sources? Because they're not changing, so they're not important for small signal. Yes, so you're doing this one piece of a superposition problem and the DC is, are taken, taken care of in the DC part of the superposition problem. So, um, and then, um, when we did GM, when we found GM, remember we grounded V out and that put zero volts across the resistor. That's always something to look for, especially with GM. Um, so if there's zero volts across a resistor, you get to get rid of that resistor. Okay. The, the other simplification we saw was when we did R out, and you set V in equal to zero, that made VBE zero, which made your current source go away. So those those are the three um, kind of things to look at look for when you're doing uh, when you're trying to come up with an equation for gain R in R out GM using the small signal model. Any, any questions up to there today? Oh. Okay. So uh, the, the next thing we're gonna be looking at is R out, which you actually already found here. You already found here. Um, and R in, but 
before we go there, just a little bit, oops. Um, and I really confused people last hour when I started talk, talking about Bosco uh, and had to explain that when I was, when I was in school, uh, I, I took, I took um, pretty much all the undergraduate computer science classes and all of the professors, for some reason, they always, when they had something that was done badly or that was stupid, uh, they would say, hey, and Microsoft did. <laughs> um, so instead of Microsoft, I use Bosco. Bosco is kind of dumb. Uh, so if there's something that probably shouldn't be done, well, if, if you hear the name Bosco, it probably means there's something that is not quite right going on here. But in the homework, Bosco had a voltage divider and it worked great. And then he or she, I don't really know, said, okay, great, I got the voltage I want and put it across another resistor. Okay. Um, and in this case, this was the first circuit worked great, but when the next circuit asked for some current, things got messy. So if this is I to R2, well, actually, let me, sorry. In just a regular voltage divider, whatever current's going through the top also goes through the bottom. Okay, but if, is connected up to something, it has a resistive load. Another way to say this is it has a resistive load. And this is gonna get confusing because we're gonna start talking about passive loads and active loads uh, for our amplifiers. That's different, but if, if you have um, connected to another circuit and that circuit is behaving like a resistor, it's gonna pull some current. And now you'll have, um, call this I1, then the current through the top is actually I1 plus IR2. And all of a sudden you're not getting the same behavior as you did with your original divider. Okay. Um, and by different behavior, I mean the voltage at this node will change if you connect it up to another circuit that pulls current off of it. And when you have, uh, when your voltage changes when current's pulled off of your circuit, that is considered a large R out. Sorry, could you repeat that? What makes it a large R out? Okay, when, um, when the voltage changes when I out changes, and the okay, I out I'm talking you. about is this right here. When, yeah, when V changes, when I out changes, that's considered a, a large R out. And so a small R out means that you can pull current off of it and it doesn't change the output voltage. But in this case, because any voltage, you, any current you pull off here means it gets added to the top current and it's not, not directly, um, yeah, so, um, I'll stop there, but yeah, if you pull current off of here, now you've got more current through the top and less through the bottom, and all of a sudden your voltage isn't the same. Okay, so that's a large R out. Um, if you have, if this is big, then um, this is actually considered a second circuit right here, even though it's just a resistor. Um, and if this is pulling a lot of current, what can you say about its R in? It's really low. It's really low. Yeah, so if, if this pulls in a lot of current, then what? Uh, another way to say that is your R in is low if there's a lot of current in. Okay, so, uh, 
if you have a common emitter amplifier, and let's say you connect it to another common emitter amplifier, Uh, you'd like this to be a high RN so it's not pulling current off because as soon as this starts pulling current, that current has to come from someplace and it comes through this resistor and it changes your voltage. Is that, I see some question marks out there. Is that, is that good? Okay. Um, yeah, so you'd like a high RN. What value of beta gives you a high R end? Really yeah. Oh. yeah, as long as beta is big, then IB is going to be very small. So beta, if you hear somebody say, oh, that has a large beta, what that's, what that's saying is that this won't pull very much current. And you can connect circuits together and it probably won't hurt this first circuit. Um, uh, and then, then you do have problems when beta is small because that means a lot of current's gonna be pulled off and this voltage will change. So the, on Wednesday, we'll start calculating R outs and R ins and kind of figure out what that means to have a high R in mathematically or theoretically. Um, and it's the same analysis uh, that we're doing for gain, except now we're looking at R in and R out. Okay. Um, Yeah, um, any any questions? I don't know, I was so much more like a good story for the first hour than the second hour, but so I wanna make sure nothing was confusing there. Good. Okay, uh, let's see, check chain rule, RN, R out meaning. RN capital two port rule. Yep, everything on my list is checked off. Right. Um, yep. Um, that's all I have. Could you go back to the uh, first four rules real quick? Okay. Okay, thank you. Do you, do you want a do you want a picture of the fourth rule? We have two. Uh, two. Yeah. Okay. So we have um, again, if you're doing uh, for, for this for the small signal model of all the components in here, which do you think makes the analysis the most difficult? The current source. The current source. So the fourth rule is actually a way to get rid of a the current sources. And what happens is I'm going to make this a, a generic Vx uh, times Gmx. So if you have a dependent current source, this right here is going to be a delta i over a delta V. And then if you multiply it by some voltage, that gives you that gives you um, how much your current actually changed. So if you have a current source, um, it looks like this that has Vx across it. So it has the equation for the current going through the current source is Vx times something and you have Vx across that current source. It turns out that can go to a resistor of size one over GMX. Oh, okay, makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Right, sure, and I'll, I'll keep going with this for 
so if you look at this, you know you have v, you know that uh, the current changes linearly with the voltage across this current source. So if you increase the voltage by two, your current changes by two. So that is, you know it's behaving like a resistor, but you need to figure out what size resistor it's behaving as. So um, what you can say is you've got a voltage across this, just using Ohm's law, and you know the current going through it is this. And since this behaves like a resistor, it would be current times, there's so many X's in this, let me get rid of that. If you knew what the resistor size of this was, it would be R times the current equals the voltage across this thing. And then you can see that the VXs cancel out. And if you solve for that, you get one equals GMX times R. So you can see that R equals one over GMX. So the fourth, fourth rule is easier to, to draw it out. Fourth rule is, see if this will, <laughs> kind of worked. That's the fourth rule. Cool, thank you. Okay. All right, any, any other questions? Uh, I, had a, I had a question real quick. Okay. Um, on, on Canvas, mm -hmm. uh, it says that homework two, there's no due date. Was it due yesterday or is it next Sunday? It's, uh, I didn't really, I thought there was, okay. Um, oh, I may was, have misread. Okay, it was supposed to be due yesterday, but you know, you know, you know my due dates. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. There's, there's a problem with the first homework too. Uh, in PolyLearn, you could set the number of points afterwards. So uh -huh. if you didn't know how many points the solutions were going to have, you could just post up a, a place to turn in the assignment. But it turns out on campus, if you try to change the points, it erases all the grading. Oh. So I'm trying to figure out how to how to deal with that. The, the okay. grade book is awful. OK, it's only week three. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure right. it out at some point. All right. Thank you, Professor. All right. Let's talk to you later. Have how a good are, how day. are how are you? Oh, I'm good. 